I beat Mega Man 9 in one sitting without taking a hit. This video is going to cover the rules, the route for playing the game, how the attempts for the run went, and a review of the run that made it all the way. This video is a summary of the run and you can find the full run in the video description. The rules for this run are as follows. First and foremost, this must be performed by a real person in one sitting. Some runs out there are what is called tool assisted, effectively meaning scripted inputs and in gameplay from a computer. This was played by me on a real Wii with a Wii Classic Pro controller. No deaths, damage, or getting hit of any kind is allowed. No glitches that allow skipping content are permitted. Mega Man 9 does not have any major known skips like this to date. There are minor skips that some speedruns utilize, such as using Concrete Shot in Magma Man's stage to speed up the stage a little bit, but none of those techniques were used. Pressing pause is naturally allowed, as this is how the player changes weapons. However, a good faith rule is put into place to disallow pressing pause to pause buffer enemy actions. Generally, it is okay to press pause to change weapons as part of strategy. This isn't a hard and fast rule and is hard to enforce, but the overall goal is to have a clean run that doesn't rely upon cheaply using pause buffering techniques to navigate the hard parts of the game. There are some fights in this game that utilize pausing more than others to swap weapons frequently, most notably the final boss. Those who are familiar with this game may know the in-game achievement called Mr. Perfect, which is an achievement awarded when beating the game without taking damage. Most people who earn this achievement get it by doing a stage, saving the game, and then doing the next stage, and resetting if something goes wrong and reloading their save. The final four stage must all be done without saving, however. The point of this particular challenge is to do it all in one sitting without relying upon the save feature or reloading at any time. In summary, the point of the challenge is to have the player beat the game with their skills and reactions without any shortcuts. We'll first cover Mega Man 9 generally. This game was released in 2008 as part of a major revisit to the series after a long break from the previous entries, Mega Man 8 for the PlayStation and Rockman and Forte for the Super Famicom, about a decade later. There are no major differences for the West's Mega Man 9 versus Japan's Rockman 9. Mega Man 9 features standard Mega Man style gameplay as seen on the NES, but Mega Man does not have a charge buster or a slide in this game. The game is fully designed around this, and otherwise the game's engine feels largely in place with its predecessor 8-bit titles. There are minor differences everywhere in this game's engine, but every Mega Man game has minor to major differences, despite how similar they may appear. Also, Mega Man 9 does not feature weapon swapping with the L and R buttons, which would be a feature in the next entry in the series, meaning the pause menu will be used heavily to swap weapons. Mega Man 9 is well known as Inti Create's first classic Mega Man game after developing the Mega Man Zero series. There are some subtly different, sometimes obviously different, design choices in how stages and bosses are designed, but as stated above for its engine, the game very much feels like a Mega Man game. This game features a wide variety of options for routes available to tackle the game. Let's first discuss the major checkpoints that dictate choosing a stage order. A usual first step is to look at both the Robot Master fights and any mini-bosses, and to see which stages are prohibitively either difficult or unsafe for tackling with the Mega Buster only. Concrete Man, Jewel Man, Hornet Man, and Magma Man all have mini-bosses, and each one is generally unfavorable to fight with Buster, except for the Palzos and Concrete Man, which are perfectly reasonable to fight with Buster. The others benefit heavily from having weapons. For the Robot Masters, most of them are fairly reasonable to fight safely with Buster only except for Jewel Man, Plug Man, and Hornet Man. Therefore, the main consideration comes down to which combination of Mini Boss, Stage, and Robot Master yields the safest early game and awards beneficial weapons in order for upcoming fights. I'll briefly discuss the other routes I did not choose first. The first consideration I had was the speedrun route, which fights Concrete Man first and Magma Man second, both with Buster. The speedrun does this order to maximize the time save of having Rush Jet, which is awarded after completing 5 stages for the stages that benefit from it most, notably Splash Woman and Plug Man stages. There are other benefits exclusive to this route, such as having Hornet Chaser for the Jewel Man mini boss, Stonehead, which immediately causes it to fall down rather than the player having to dodge for a while. The main drawback of this route is the Magma Man fight, which is done with Buster. It is a very challenging and close quarters fight that risks taking damage every time Magma Man jumps, 
and I did not think it was worth resetting over this fight for the benefits of this round. There is another route that requires getting very good at the Tornado Man fight with Buster and fighting him first. This route does not let you use Rush Jet in his stage, which is a huge benefit of the other routes. But the Tornado Man first route lets you breeze through Magma Man's stage and boss, and Magma Bazooka is generally a very good weapon. The rest of this run would follow weakness order and have no real routing issues in the upcoming sections. But it requires mastering the Tornado Man fight with Buster, which is a random and challenging starting point, on top of a slow stage without Rush Jet. The route I chose was the simple one, which starts with Splash Woman and follows weakness order. There are multiple benefits to this route. It starts with a slightly difficult Buster fight, but Splash Woman takes 2 damage per Buster shot. She awards the Fantastic Laser Trident weapon, which pierces enemies and has 2 uses per 1 weapon tick, for a total of 56 shots total. The weakness order begins after with Concrete Man, and most of the route comes together nicely from here. The Stonehead mini boss in Jewel Man stage, also known as Cheese Ball, is a pain point because the only weapon you have to work with against him is the Concrete Shot. You have to dodge the very random falling rocks pattern and be ready for Stonehead exactly when he comes down to avoid being stunned and hit, all of which causes quite a few resets when attempting this route. But after Stonehead, every mini boss and robot master has adequate weapons to be dealt with. This route does not get the nice rush jet synergy that other routes do, notably for Plugman stage with the disappearing Yoku blocks, but with some practice these sections are not so difficult. Ultimately the route decision comes down to which difficult part you prefer to master, either mastering the Magma Man fight, the Tornado Man fight, or the Stonehead fight. To me the final option here made sense. The shop is visited twice during the run. A cosmetic benefit of the route I chose was that there are 20 screws, the game's currency, that can be picked up easily in Splash Woman stage to buy the Book of Hairstyles, which doubles damage taken for an outfit change. This is purely for fun, because the idea is that we aren't taking any damage at all, so why not have it? Later, 50 more screws are collected with relative ease, and an M tank is purchased before entering Wily Castle. This will be covered later in this video, but this M tank allows for a full refill before getting the M tank that is in Wily 3, which is then carried all the way to the final boss. Alright, let's discuss the successful run and comment on some of the runs that did not make it all the way. Mega Man 9 was overall a very fun game to practice and learn about. It is a very nice game to pick up and play for short bursts to practice, or to practice for longer lengths of time too. Only having 4 stages after the 8 Robot Masters is also a very nice aspect of the game, compared to some of the longer entries in the series. The run starts in Splash Woman's stage. This stage has no mini boss, and is a very nice stage to reset to. The music's good, and it's generally a pretty simple stage that the Buster can easily handle. The large screws yield 20 screws, and a few large screws will be obtained throughout the run. Splash Woman's fight is a tricky fight to do with Buster, and even while trying to align her movement to be the same every time, it can be tricky to get her to move exactly the way you want. You risk getting hit by the awkward laser tridents she fires from above between phases. But as stated before, she takes 2 damage per Mega Buster shot and goes down with practice. A quick visit to the shop to get the Book of Hairstyles, just for fun. Roll reminds us that guys should look their best every now and then too. Concrete Man is next. This stage features a slightly challenging first screen, but the same movement and buster shot timing through it should yield consistent results. The mini bosses of this stage are 3 Pauzo enemies, which go down to buster pretty easily. However, it does take quite a bit of getting used to mashing and positioning to ensure not getting hit. Afterwards, Laser Trident cleans up the rest of the very straightforward stage from here, and Concrete Man is up. He is a tricky fight due to his charge speed and how he shoots his concrete shot. In general, you want to be walking away from him while he's taking any action, in the event that he fires concrete shot, to avoid getting hit. You also need to jump appropriately to avoid getting stunned by his larger stomp attack. It's a fun fight, but it takes a lot of practice to ensure consistently avoiding any hits, as he can encroach upon your space quickly and sometimes put you in a difficult position to dodge the next attack. Next is Galaxy Man, one of the longer stages, even without a mini boss. The whole stage is completable with Buster only, but Rush Coil is used to speed up some sections and make things a bit safer overall. Galaxy Man's fight goes down to 7 hits of Concrete Shot, 
and is generally not trouble to deal with. Shooting his black hole bomb with concrete shot to stop it is very helpful tech to wear him down fast. Jewel Man comes next and is one of the hardest stages in the run. There's a lot of awkward enemy placement, especially from the small green spin cutters, the spider named Day Spider, and the metal beta enemies. A combination of laser trident, concrete shot, and black hole bomb clean up the first few screens, and it's off to Cheese Ball, enemy of the stream. This mini boss's actual name is Stonehead, and is the concession I had to make for choosing this route. Concrete Shot is the only weapon to use against it, which means I have to wait for the mini boss to come down after the stone barrage. This is a common reset point, where sometimes the patterns are very rude and trap you. When this mini boss comes down, it slams the ground and the player must jump to avoid the stun, which sometimes is very difficult with the falling rocks above. With good placement and timing, the mini boss will melt to Concrete Shot. The rest of the stage is still fairly tricky, but thankfully with Black Hole Bomb, Jewel Man is perhaps the easiest robot master fight. Black Hole Bomb is active for a very long time, and Jewel Man can be manipulated to jump wherever Mega Man jumps, so with good timing the boss will go down to two Black Hole Bombs easily. Afterwards is Plug Man stage, which features the disappearing Yoku blocks as its main mechanic. Other routes would have Rush Jet for this stage, but I do not, so I have to navigate the blocks carefully. Both Laser Trident and Black Hole Bomb get nice usage in this stage, but there generally aren't too many enemies to deal with. I would unfortunately reset on this stage a little too often for messing up the platforming, especially after having a clean run through Jewel Man stage. Plug Man's fight is one of the harder fights. What's important to know is that while having Jewel Satellite active, Mega Man cannot take any damage from Plug Man's projectiles whatsoever. However, if Mega Man gets close enough to Plug Man to hit him with the shield, the shield immediately deactivates and can put Mega Man at risk for taking damage. Learning how to attack between Plug Man's patterns and maximizing having the shield out is a large challenge. He tends to jump around a lot, and body contact is the number one way to take damage against him. But careful positioning yields fairly consistent results. After 5 stages, Rush Jet is obtained, and Tornado Man stage comes next. Rush Coil and Rush Jet get heavy usage to clear many of the longer screens with ease. The middle section of the stage utilizes Black Hole Bomb to cleanly deal with some enemies. It is at this time that I would check to see if I've earned 50 screws, which is required for purchasing an M-Tank before entering the Wily stages. If I'm short, I can pick up a large screw here to make sure I've got enough. Jewel Satellite gives some protection for the final screen, and then off to the boss. Tornado Man has a somewhat chaotic flowchart, but the main things to know is that the boss will not do the same action more than twice in a row, and Tornado Man can only either jump straight vertically, or jump to where you are. Plug Ball can be used in rapid succession against him, and three can be fired at once. His own tornadoes can be dispelled with Plug Ball. As with the Concrete Man and Plug Man fights, paying very careful attention to when he's about to take an action and reacting appropriately yields good results. But every now and then he will give you some very challenging pattern that is tough to overcome, especially when he forces you to dodge from the right side instead of the usual left side. Magma Man comes 7th in the stage order. The stage is easily cleared with all the weapons obtained so far, but the mini-boss, Chang-Ki Dragon, is a challenging one. A combination of Rush Coil and Concrete Shot cleans it up nicely, but missing even one shot can make the scramble chaotic to cleanly finish. Thankfully, a Black Hole Bomb placed on the left side of the screen is a very safe option to land the final blow if necessary. Jewel Satellite and Rush Jet easily round out the stage from here. Magma Man himself is much easier with Tornado Blow available as a weapon, but it is still not completely easy. He will jump either high or low, which equates to one or two tiles away from where he starts each jump. Tornado Blow is used at the start of his jumps to clear the projectiles, and the gravity boost from using the weapon allows Mega Man to jump over Magma Man as an option. The timing of how to clear him, either above or below, is all dependent on what patterns he gives, so it is never really truly safe. After using 4 Tornado Blow, he has 4 health left, and he often will stand still and recharge after those 4 hits, so Buster or Laser Trident takes him down. 
The final of the Robot Masters is up, Hornet Man. Hornet Man's first few screens are a bit tricky with the Carry Carry enemies, but Plug Ball makes quick work of them. One last chance for getting a large screw here, then the stage makes way for the mini boss, Hana Biren. At first, this mini boss was very challenging to me, as it can either give a very favorable pattern or a much more challenging one. When I started doing attempts, I basically just hoped for the good pattern, but it caused me to get hit a lot when the bad patterns would come. I workshopped a number of backup solutions for handling the harder patterns, and it immensely helped my success rate. It will spawn randomly across the eight different tiles, and if it spawns directly adjacent to Mega Man at the start, Concrete Shot can wear it down immediately. But often it will spawn elsewhere, and a combination of Jewel Satellite for protection and use of Laser Trident, Concrete Shot, and Plug Ball can take it out. Tornado Blow will also clean up this fight easily, but I opted not to use Tornado Blow often because this mini boss reappears in Wily 2, so I opted to stay consistent with my strategies for practice. Not using Tornado Blow also allows its usage for the mini boss, which cleans up the rest of the stage very nicely. Hornet Man is one of the simplest fights with Magma and Bazooka, and eight robots go down. After the Wily stages open up, a quick detour to the shop is made. With 50 screws in hand, an M tank is purchased and will be used in the Wily stages before getting another one. Weapon routing is very important, as weapon energy is not restored between stages in the Wily stages. Having access to two M-Tanks over the course of the run will massively benefit the weapon energy routing. Wily 1 is a long stage, but despite being a fairly hard stage casually, it's pretty simple with some good planning. Jewel Satellite crushes the first screen of the stage, and the initial climb with Rush Jet and Laser Trident is easily traversed. Chenki Dragon is back as the mini boss, and the same strategy takes it out. The rest of the climb up the tower is handled with a lot of rush jet usage. The Fire Pillar screens are challenging, and being a little off on timing will result in instant death. The boss is Spike Pusher's RB, who is a rather unique boss. The idea is to push each part back with weapons to hit spikes to actually damage it. If any one part does not get destroyed in time, it will start firing homing shots. The strategy to safely take it out is to spend time defeating the bottom two parts back and forth, and around the time the top two will fire homing shots, use Tornado Blow to take all of them out and reset their timers. In all attempts, this fight was never a problem. Wily 2 starts by refilling Tornado Blow, which will be used on this stage's boss as well. Lots of weapon swapping and navigating narrow corridors, then off to a refight against our flower friend, Hanabira. It's important to not use Tornado Blow here because it'll be used in this stage's boss, so other weapons are opted in, just like in Hornet Man stage. The winning run here got the best pattern, a nice and easy concrete shot unload kind of fight. The next sections are easy to mess up, including careful placement of buster shots to lure the mine enemies, the Okusutoban, then Black Hole Bomb to clear them safely. Laser Trident and Rush Coil cleans up the remainder of the stage. In this run, and this run only, I got pushed back by this final Big Stomper enemy and busted out Plug Ball to take it out safely. Mega Mech Shark is this stage's boss, a three-part boss. Bases 1 and 2 are quite simple, using Laser Trident with Rush Coil, then Tornado Blow on the second part. Tornado Blow may be expensive to use, but an M-Tank is going to be used in the next stage so there's no need to hold back. The final section of this boss is the toughest, but once the first laser pattern is dodged from Mega Mech Shark's head, the rest of the fight is usually fast and handled easily. It all comes down to dodging in between the laser pattern, and there are a few patterns to react to. Wily 3 is the last platforming stage, and it's overall a bit easier than the others. The initial climb is handled with Buster, but the second horizontal screen is a bit scary with one particular jump near spikes. Careful use of Laser Trident and Plug Ball lead to the next elevator, and an M-Tank is used here. By using it here, weapon energy is fully refilled, and an M-Tank is retrieved in a few screens from now, which allows for maximizing weapon energy all the way through the refights. Laser Trident and Black Hole Bomb are used between this point and Wily 4's refights, but there will be enough left over to safely finish the refights. The final screen in Wily 3 is a short onslaught, 
but it's primarily important to keep moving and not stop the pace, or the classical cannons will start firing. The boss is Twin Devil, which is a fully scripted fight. By waiting for a visual cue for when the eye exposes itself, four hits are safely connected with Black Hole Bomb. It is possible to one cycle this boss with five hits, but I had trouble doing it consistently without risking taking damage. I practiced landing four hits, then dodging the rest of Twin Devil's pattern, then to go on to finish the rest of the fight safely with a final hit. Wily 4, just like the other challenges in this series I've done up until this point, is the hardest stage, the refight stage. This stage begins with some platforming and concrete shot usage, but with careful play it is always consistent and not a problem. The refights themselves can be fought in any order, but because the M tank is going to be used at the end of the refights before the final fight, a nice strategy is to do Plugman's fight late into refights just in case a jewel satellite is accidentally used up. Then the M tank can be used to get more jewel satellite during that fight. That did not happen in this run, however. I typically start with Galaxy Man simply because Concrete Shot was already equipped and is in the top left, then go counterclockwise with some exceptions. Refights went well and were stable in the run, and usually Tornado Man and Plug Man are difficult and cause some stress. After Concrete Man, the M tank is used, most importantly, to resort Concrete Shot, Black Hole Bomb, and Tornado Hold, all of which will get used. The final boss in this game is a three phase fight. Phase 1 is an egg juggle, and Laser Trident takes care of it. This phase in this run was pretty scary, with some very close encounters with the eggs. No matter how much I would practice this phase, every now and then something would catch me off guard. On to phase 2. This phase is weak to concrete shot. Rush Coil is used to gain some safety from attacks, but it's probably the easiest of the phases. Patience is really important with this phase, and to not overshoot your position. The flame patterns are definitely a challenge to navigate. Phase 3, the capsule phase, is a completely chaotic final part of the run. Wily can spawn mostly anywhere, and he can fake out a spawn once per actual attack cycle. However, if he does fake out once, his next spawn will guaranteed be an attack. He only has two attacks, but they are handled completely differently. It is almost always beneficial for him to spawn low on the ground. His weakness is Plug Ball, which is a fairly awkward weakness since it requires being close to connect. The strategy I came up with to safely handle him was to use Black Hole Bomb and Tornado Hole to clear projectiles, and hope for low spawns to be able to clear his projectiles then getting close with Plug Ball. Between his attacks, Magma Bazooka and Hornet Chaser can be squeezed in for some extra damage. It is all in a very stressful fight because of the fake out factor. You can easily be a little too late, especially with his orange projectile pattern, and instantly take damage on a low spawn if you are not prepared for it. But it is also a very fun fight. Getting the final run with a solidly executed final fight was nerve wracking, but it felt awesome to clutch it out, and it was all worth it. The game is complete, and I get awarded with the Mr. Perfect achievement to top it all off. Mega Man 9 was the third game in the classic Mega Man series I beat without taking damage, after Mega Man 8 and Mega Man 6. Mega Man 9 was incredibly fun to play, and the game's short length compared to others in the series made it pretty fun and maybe a little easier than the others so far. But the final fight being a major obstacle made every run tough. With this, I've completed three runs in the classic Mega Man series, and there's nine more to go. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and the style of this content, please consider subscribing to the channel and let me know your feedback in the comments. See you for the next one.